Hi, this is Paul Neal with Pen Productions. Uh, today I'm just going to do a quick tutorial on how to make procedural rope make it look really nice. Um, so we're going to uh, start in the top viewport and uh, I'm going to start by uh, hitting X and typing in cylinder and we'll make a, a cylinder and uh, you know of a given length here and let's just go to the uh, front viewport and I want to give it a smaller uh, radius maybe of about uh, maybe a four or something we can see there and uh, for this uh, I'm going to uh, give it a specific length say 200 in length uh, to start with and uh, with this 200 in length then um, uh, we can uh, start adding some segments to it so we'll add a bunch of height segments to it at this point and uh, we're going to want a bunch of uh, segments around so I want to say 36 at least for now um, on this I want to uh, then do uh, a deform on it and uh, and actually deform it I'm just getting the uh, selection brackets off there because I don't like the selection brackets so um, with this now we want to add a displace modifier on here so uh, I'll uh, hit X and type in displace and we want to find the displace uh, modifier and with a displace modifier I'm going to hit cylinder so it gives us a cylinder along its length by default um, and uh, open up the material editor and a material editor I'm going to start with just a gradient ramp and the gradient ramp uh, we'll have uh, a few uh, settings changed on it. Center one's going to be white at this point, and uh, both are going to be black either end. And I want to take this and I want to pipe it into the uh, map slot here and instance it uh, of the displace modifier. And then I want to um, work out the strength of this and, and type uh, push it up. And so uh, let's also get the right amount of tiling, which will be three, because most ropes are going to have three. Um, uh, you know, large strands that are usually generated out of many smaller strands. So um, we're going to do the uh, large ones with the displace here. So you can see the shape's not very good. Now you could do uh, an ease in, ease out, but you'll find out that it doesn't work very well either. Um, so what I prefer to do is just sort of shape it out uh, using um, some tabs here. And so that's getting us a, a bit of a rounder bump by duplicating the white in the middle. But then I'm going to select just over, um, you know, right about to the uh, sort of, uh, I guess, closer to the, the second tab here and then slide out again. And the same here, closer to it and then slide out. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing uh, tones of, uh, um, of white and then moving them over. And again, same, I'm just going to uh, just push that one and then push it over. And it's a quick way of setting those colors and you can see I'm getting these nice round um, you know large strands going uh, which uh, works uh, really well so with that displace on there and it's uh, nicely displaced I can then uh, go in and add a twist so X again twist modifier and of course we can twist that up as many times as we want and we have um, you know a piece of rope starting to uh, be built and um, now for a quick shader, I'll just use uh, just use a standard uh, Mac shader for now, and I'm going to use again a gradient ramp at this point in time. So uh, we'll take the um, general gradient ramp, and um, uh, let's uh, let's give it a brown sort of tone somewhere in there, a darker brown tone, and. Uh, a bit of a lighter brown tone. With this gradient ramp, we're going to turn on mirror and uh, then we can, um, you know, dial it up and down. So let's just uh, add this material onto the object and uh, we're going to uh, show the uh, material realistic in viewport so we can see the, uh, the stripes being generated on it. And uh, so let's just tile it up until we've got a bunch of sort of, you know, uh, thin uh, slices going here around the, the uh, mesh and we can see that now uh, giving us a better uh, look and feel there of uh, of what's happening now we also might want to rotate it a little bit because they actually twist as well and so you really want to twist those along um, if you're doing it properly you're trying to make it look like they're twisting so I'm going to angle the whole thing 
and get them to look like they're twisting as, uh, a little bit. I believe they twist in the ang on the same angle as the rest of the rope does. That's what uh, twists a rope and keep it all, all twisted together. So, um, you know, adjusting up and down the, uh, the amount of tiling here, it looks pretty good. Now we want to do a little bit of darkening and everything. We can darken the inside uh, edge of it and uh, give it some bumps. So I'm just going to plug that into the bump. Um, but what I'm going to do as well is just add a composite map and just hold down control as I start to move it. And I can drop it on and connect it into the first layer. Add a new layer to there. And I want to plug in uh, into layer two our gradient ramp that's actually giving us our shape. And you can see that the colors change now. And I'm going to set that to uh, multiply. So I want to multiply and darken the inside edges of it all here. And I might want to do it more than it actually is, but I don't want to adjust the shape of this gradient ramp now because it's actually controlling the outer shape. So uh, once again, I'm just going to go grab, for instance, a, an output, hold down control and drop it onto the output of the gradient. So this gradient's going directly into this place. This one's not affecting it. I'm going to turn on the color map a bit and uh, darken it and um, maybe just darken it more um, in a sort of coming out a bit more and then we can uh, have the sort of the inner edges of it a little darker uh, as it goes here so uh, I think that looks uh, pretty good at this point and so there you can see that we've got this rope twisting around and um, you know it's procedurally being generated uh, the amount it's being displaced we can uh, we can play with it and uh, you know, adjust how much it actually is getting pushed in and out um, for whatever our needs might be. Uh, and of course, then we can start playing around with other settings to get it to look right. Now, uh, we want to have this procedural rope able to be um, lengthened and shortened um, and, and uh, deformed so that it stays looking like a rope um, and, uh, and works like the rope that we expect it to work like. So, I'm just going to go into the front viewport again, uh, turn my grid back on, turn on my snap, and uh, make sure my snap settings are on grid point here, and uh, go to my line, and I'm just going to make a line from bottom to top um, uh, the same length, so it's the same length of uh, 200 units long to get us started, uh, get us started here. So uh, then what we want to do is we want to use a path deform WSM. And we can say pick path, and it'll probably drop it on its side. We want to say move to path. Um, and you can see it looks like my path, when I made it, I accidentally uh, stretched one end of it. You can see, um, I'm just going to turn off my snap here. And let's go back to our path. Let's grab the handles. And I'm betting that I've got a Bezier handle on one of these. So I'm just going to, uh, for now, say corner. There you go, and straighten it all out because it must I must have uh, um, swiped a little bit as I created it um, and I could even just for instance as well say smooth uh, at this point and just so that we can easily um, flex, bend and flex it I'm going to say divide maybe divide again so that I've got a few verts on here um, so we can now pull it and you can see that obviously the rope isn't uh, behaving correctly in a couple of respects one if I pull it way out to the side, you can see that this part of the rope here is now not twisting as much as this lower part of the rope. That's because it comes back to the same reason we had before um, when we first started. If I put a Bezier handle on it and grab that handle, you can see that I can um, stretch sort of a segment of it. And we don't want that to happen. We don't want that stretching to occur. And so the way to get around that is by add a normalized spline modifier and the normalized spline modifier if we look at it is going to rebuild the spline so into object properties and I'll just turn on vertex ticks so you can see now there's evenly spaced vertices along that spline and so I'll animate or hook up my spline below the normalized spline and you'll see now um, when we show end result on it and I move that original spline I'm not going to get the same distortion happening because, so you can see it's not distorting it the same way. And that's because the spline's being rebuilt um, 
as it goes. So it's not uh, it's not creating those same problems. And we want to do any rigging to the spline before the normalized spline is on it um, in the stack. So if we we're going to skin it to something or we we're going to have other control objects and whatnot, so we can pull them around. Um, and so with that being said, now uh, we can do uh, a couple other little things um, to make this uh, sort of work really nice. Uh, one, we want it so that if this path does get longer, uh, that it actually uh, animates the rope to be the right length. So let's set that up. I'm going to go back to the line here and down below, I'm going to add in a um, uh, spline IK modifier, spline IK So the spline IK control, there it is, sorry. And we're gonna say create helpers. And I'll just make the helpers bigger just so we can grab them really easy. And I wanna turn on animate, for instance. And we're just gonna grab a couple of these and I'll just pull them out in some different directions. And so that rope obviously should stay the, the right length uh, and not do what it's actually doing here. So. Uh, let's get that to work and let's hook that up so it stays the right length. Now you could use the height here, but there's problems with that with the displace because the displace has a gizmo around it and it has to get the same length. The problem with the, the, uh, the gizmo is, is it scales from the center and not from the end. So there can be a little bit problems there. So the easier way to do that um, is to actually use the percent along path. So if we were to take it out to the uh, fully animated and take our percent along path, or sorry, the stretch, sorry, not present along path and stretch it, we'll be able to stretch it along the length and get it to fit. So we're gonna control the stretch here and I'm going to use the dope sheet for that. And in the uh, stretch, now one of the things I have turned on, if you hit Q with it open, you'll get your uh, filters. I always have my uh, controller types turned on so that I can see what kind of controller it is. I'm gonna right click on it and go in and, and choose a float script. We need to add the spline. So a quick trick of adding the spline, when you say create, instead of digging through and trying to find the correct line in your scene, which could be a huge scene, easiest way if you wanna add a node is just go to assign constant and type in the universal dollar sign, which allows you to pick an object, uh, select an object in Mac script. Uh, make sure you don't have any, uh, multiple objects picked. And right now we've got the wrong one, we have the cylinder. So I wanna grab the spline and then just say assign constant and dollar sign, you'll see now it's equating to the spline. So there we go. And then we need the curve length. So it's a uh, curve length of what? Of the spline. And if we hit evaluate, it'll go sailing off to who knows where. And it's because it's setting it to a stretch of, instead of one, of, uh, of 200. So we know the default length was 200. So we're gonna divide that value by two, 200. So now you can see that the length of the, um, uh, of the uh, rope is matching the length of the spline. No matter what we do with the spline now, it's always gonna be the correct length just by uh, curve length uh, of the spline divided by its initial length. And we knew that was 200 in this case. So you can use a couple of ways of getting curve length, type it in the max script listener, or you could uh, go into the um, measure utility and it'll tell you the length of a curve as well uh, in here. So if you have a, a spline uh, selected, It'll tell you it has a length of 200 in this case, or whatever the length is, and you can use that as your divisor here. So with that um, working and picked, now you'll notice there's another problem, and that's the twist is no longer correct. We need to up the amount of twists there are in this. So I'm gonna go to the um, down to the um, modified object, and we wanna go to twist and angle. And again, we're gonna grab the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the same uh, float script, it's gonna be almost the same thing. So the easiest way to do this might be actually just to copy the float script here. And I'm gonna say paste, and I'll make sure I wanna paste a copy, not an instance in this case, because we wanna change it. And so with properties, I don't need the divide by 200, I need the curve length. So at this point now, you'll see that the, the amount of twist is changing based on the length of the rope. Now, I obviously probably need it a little higher, so I wanna say times maybe two, see what that gets me, not enough, maybe four, and get my curve, uh, my length back, and you'll see now as it gets longer, it's actually 
twisting and staying twisted the the correct amount it's actually twisting it more as it gets longer so this rope is getting longer you can see it's doing what it's supposed to do and and twisting the rope out so there you can see it actually twisting away and, and so I can set the, my rope to wherever I need and it's going to be the right amount of twist um, I'm going to say close on that one now the next one you might want to consider will be the uh, amount of segments along the length. So you can see the amount of segments along the length is getting less and less as the rope gets longer and longer. So again, we can use do that down at the bottom. And I'm going to copy the, again, the um, uh, float script. And I'm going to go uh, height segments. And we're going to say paste, copy again, because we're going to need to slightly change that, I'm sure. And with it, actually four looks pretty good. You know, we could have actually we could have actually left that um, uh, as an instance if we wanted. So that's actually pretty good. Or we could have gone six and we could, you know, set it up higher if we wanted. But again, now what we'll get is less segments when it's down low and more segments when it's uh, being stretched out. And that is going to keep stretching and keep rebuilding the uh, curve. Now, something else to note that uh, people may not realize, down in cylinder, if you try and type in uh, the height segments, it'll stop at 200. You can't turn the spinner any higher. That doesn't mean the value doesn't go any higher. In fact, it goes to whatever value you want, but you have to access it via max script to push it past what the UI has been allowed to uh, go to. Uh, I guess it was probably set up initially like that to make sure that somebody didn't type it up to a million and then wait and crash their, uh, you know, 486 DX280 that was, uh, you know, they bought in uh, 1997. Um, so uh, that it now has a piece of rope and that piece of rope is uh, automatically uh, sizing itself and um, up keeping updated. It's got a procedural texture on it. It's got a procedural... Uh, um, you know, animation set up on it. And we could uh, easily go and string that around some object now and stretch it out however our needs are to set that rope up. We wouldn't have to use the uh, spline IK uh, help uh, modifier here. I'm just doing it for this purpose of this uh, tutorial. Uh, you could use all kinds of methods for sitting, setting this up uh, and, uh, and placing it where you need it now. But there you go, there's a procedural rope.